New Pokemon Snap just released for the Switch, but you know what? It released too late. You guys remember the Wii U. You know, the console that would have been perfect for a Pokemon Snap game. I mean, come on, it looks like a camera, you could use the motion controls, and there's a screen right there. But of course, the Wii U was a complete flop, so I guess the Pokemon company was waiting for something a bit more successful to come out. So yes, it makes sense why they waited to release this on the Switch. And if you remember the Nintendo Labo, they even made a camera controller. So yeah, it would make perfect sense. New Pokemon Snap, Labo controller. They didn't do it. Why? I don't know. I mean, sure, you can play new Pokemon Snap with a little bit of gyro controls, but it's more like an aiming assist similar to Splatoon. What I want is the motion controls that I missed out on on the Wii U. So you know what I did? I made a controller myself. But how did I go about making this thing? And how does it even work? Well, let me show you. So to start, I found these models that essentially replicate what the Labo does with cardboard, but is 3D printable. So after purchasing it and downloading the files, I heavily modify the model in Tinkercad to fit my needs, and also look as close to the camera in-game as possible. Then all I had to do was print it off. I also had to remove a ton of support material, because I had to print it at a really awkward angle due to the shape of the whole thing. Now to get things started, I used a lot of painter's tape in a very not jank manner, and sprayed on a few coats of red. And then some metallic-y, shiny spray paint for the bottom part. I was having issues getting the spray paint to stick on the camera, so I did a little bit of primer for the lens, and then added on some red paint. So, uh, this was the result of the spray painting. As you can tell, I could have done a much better job with the painter's tape, but I went over it later with some black paint, so not that big of a deal. For the line at the top, I was a lot more calculating in how I use my painter's tape. And as I peel the tape back, it's a much more satisfying line. Then I printed off some of the tiny bits that will go on the camera later. And I also printed off some stencils to make the upcoming painting a bit easier. I also printed off this doohickey, but I'll get to that in a bit. Unfortunately, these were the results of using the stencils. So instead I just 3D printed out the rings, painted them up, and also added the logo. Then using a combination of Illustrator and Photoshop, I made a graphic to represent the front screen of the camera. Then I got it printed out as a sticker, and stuck it on. Then all there was left to do was add some of the details, and the construction was finished. So this is how the controller actually works. First you put the right Joy-Con in this slot, and then you slide the left Joy-Con into the camera lens. Tilting the camera up and down moves you on the Y axis, and pivoting your camera left and right moves your stick on the X axis. To zoom in, all you have to do is rotate the camera lens. And you still have access to all your face buttons and the R button to take a shot. So to get this to actually work, there's also a bunch of computer junk I had to do as well. First, I downloaded a program called ReWASD, which allows you to connect your Joy-Cons and remap the buttons and motion controls. For the left Joy-Con, I just disabled all the motion controls, except for when it senses that it's in a heavily downward position. Then it gets mapped to L. For the right Joy-Con, the motion controls are mapped to the L stick, and if you press in on the L stick, that resets the gyro positioning. So now with this program, my computer thinks that an Xbox 360 controller is actually connected to it. So now we can use G-Tuner to route the Xbox 360 inputs into my Titan 1 device, which makes the Nintendo Switch think it's receiving Pro Controller inputs. Now the real question is, how well does it work? Well... First of all, moving the cursor around is kind of a pain because it wasn't really meant for these gyro controls. I do have to say, moving up and down feel alright, but pivoting left and right can be a complete pain. It feels like I'm playing a really poorly coded Kinect game. It feels like I'm using a controller made in the Super NES era that was, you know, ambitious for its time, but didn't quite do it. I feel like I'm using a controller that is also like three seconds behind my actual inputs. It feels like when I'm trying to move left and right, I'm wrestling with an invisible ghost that 
wants to make me not have- Look, a it's really hard to describe how controls feel, all right? It doesn't help that your car is also on a path, so if you want to go backwards, you have to slowly try to pivot yourself and try to reorient yourself so you can finally take a shot. It's not easy. But after playing on the first course about three or four times, I could get some okay shots presented to the professor. Nothing you would want to print out or hang on your fridge, but you know, they're decent. For an extra challenge, the controller can actually hold the switch in handheld mode. And then using the doohickey from before, we can secure it into place. And then using some extension cables, plug in the wire to the bottom of your switch, and it looks really janky and funky, but it works. And I say it works in the most loose sense, because the controls are still pretty janky, but the novelty of it's kind of funny. But don't expect yourself to be the Georgia O'Keefe of the Pokemon world with this setup. So, after all that hard work, did I find the perfect way to play new Pokemon Snap? Of course not, did you watch the video? I mean, sure, I was fine with how it physically turned out. It looks kind of cool, and it'd probably look good on a shelf, but... Using this as a controller isn't exactly viable right now. If I had to make some changes, I would probably make the buttons on top actually functional. And of course, I would try to, you know, actually fix the gyro controls. But the fun thing about this is, this is the first iteration of this. If someone else wants to take a crack at doing something like this, they are more than free to do so. And I would be really excited to see if anyone else out there would try to improve upon my design. But that's all I got for now. Thank you so much for sticking around to the end of the video. And if you thought this was cool and you want to share with your friends, if you pass this video along, it means a lot to me. Also, leaving a like and commenting literally anything helps out as well. If you want to tell me I need to get my quarantine haircut taken care of, that's fine. A little engagement goes a long way here. Well, that's it for me. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm about to go see if I can beat Dark Souls on this thing. Now that's a challenge. Uh -huh.